Hi, this is Barry Brennan. I'm going to be talking to you about persuasive speaking methods or methods for persuasive speaking. And um, we're going to go straight to, this is for my public speaking class, so we're going to go straight to the PowerPoint and um, basically this is going to be talking about how to organize your speech. So before we talked about persuasive speaking and purposes for persuasive speaking, et cetera, in the other lectures, but this time we're going to talk about methods for organizing your speech because there's a completely different method for organizing your speech for persuasive speaking than there is for informative speaking. So here we go. That I need. Okay. Methods for persuading. Organize your persuasive speech. Here we go. All right. So I'll remind you again. The way you want to start out with persuasive speaking is you want to know what is your goal? What's your end game? What are you planning on trying to get from your audience? Right? Are you trying to get your audience to change a behavior, change an attitude, change the way they live their life, um, change their belief set. What are you after? And it could be all of the above, but you need to know what it is, what's your goal. You need to start there. And what I like to say is work backwards. Because everything that you are working toward should be toward the same goal. So you need to know what that goal is. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing this for a minute. I need to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, it's like I said, I'm right back. I just wanted to get my phone so I know what it is we are. Uh... Okay, there we are. So here's a screen. What's your goal? Persuade change, alter, influence behavior, attitudes, or beliefs of your target audience. Some of this is gonna be review for you. Okay, think about what is in, I like to think of, I like to think of public speaking as getting a toolbox, right? We are, we, in this class, we get all these kinds of tools and the ways, methods and ways that we can, one, organize our speech, two, find the most effective strategies for not just organizing, but uh, communicating with their audience, both verbally, non-verbally, and through our words, right? So there's all kinds of things that, that, that we put in our toolbox. We bring this toolbox with us. It's empty. And by the time we leave this class, hopefully we filled it up with all kinds of really amazing things. So in that toolbox, get about what's your goal, keeping your audience in mind. You can't, you got to think about who you're trying to persuade, and if you can get that particular audience to do it. So think about your audience, it has to be reasonable. Have you gotten your research, your facts, your testimony? Have you gotten your supporting materials? In this case, we're gonna call it evidence. You need that evidence. Without it, then it's just your opinion. You're giving a speech of opinion. If you actually wanna persuade, you gotta present the facts. You gotta show us that um, these are the reasons why this needs to change. And this is, here's proof that someone else has used the same thing and, and it's been a good solution. It's, the change has been good. So you need to do that. That's your job to bring that research. Knowing how you plan to go about making your argument. And we'll talk more about that. We're going to cover three different ways, including the way that you're going to use for your persistent speech. You got to be convicted. You know, your passion and conviction. If you're not in it, we're not going to be in it. If you don't believe what you're saying, we won't believe what you're saying. And I can't actually emphasize this enough. You have to believe what you're saying. You have to completely believe it. And if you don't, in persuasive speaking, it won't be, um, it won't be convincing. This is what's different than argumentation. Argumentation is, can you make a good argument? You don't have to believe it. Sure, if you do believe it. It's probably helps you with your argument, with making an argument, but you don't have to. 
It's about how it's really a logic exercise and how you put the evidence together to make a good argument. So in persuasive speaking, you're making a good argument and we want your passion and conviction behind your words. You have learned from your previous experience how to do a speech. You know how to do this. You're just gonna tweak a little to make it into persuasive speech and you guys are gonna be golden, I know it. Okay, have you done your due diligence? Are you using the most recent research? Right? Have you got the most recent research about your problem? Have you got the most recent research about solutions? It's your job to be up to date about giving us that information. Have you made sure it's a credible source? We've talked about ad infinitum in class about what is a credible source, right? How do we know it's a credible source? Dot gov, dot org, um, dot, not, um, dot edu if you're looking on, on the website. If you look in the library database on campus, you know, through the online database, those are credible sources. Credible sources are, you know, something's credible if someone's had first-hand experience, first experience, meaning they're directly experienced it, or um, their background, right? They're credible if, if they've had years of experience doing that particular activity or career, or they have, um, as you can see behind me, my credentials, right? They have credentials in that particular, they have degrees or credentials showing you that they've actually mastered or uh, have a college degree in that particular area. We know people who work for national newspapers have college degrees. Just so you know, writers for national newspapers, you can assume, have college degrees. Okay, do you have a variety of research, right? Did you just pull it from one source? Because if you pull everything from the New York Times, guess what? It's the opinion of the New York Times, right? It, it is, ends up feeling like the opinion. You need to pull from different places, right? Not just the Fresno Bee, right? Pull from the Hanford Sentinel. Pull from the Sacramento Bee. Pull from, you can pull from uh, California state newspapers, not just the Central Valley if you're trying to persuade us on something that is gonna work in California and in the Valley. Are you making sure that um, you're not being biased? Are you giving a balanced perspective? Have you met the research requirements of the assignment? Um, when you translate your research through your speech, you can quote your source, but the best way to paraphrase work on paraphrasing your sources work on paraphrasing understanding what they're saying and paraphrasing but still citing where you information from when you're doing that research make sure you've kept your record of that so you don't have to keep going back and looking for it keep a record when you find something and write it down Okay, right now I'm gonna talk about the different methods of um, how you can outline and organize your speech. And we're gonna stop here and I'm gonna create another video which will then move into how you're gonna do your assignment. So I'll see you in just a bit.